Good morning everyone. I hope you had a lovely break and you're ready to get back to work. Before the break, you were set a challenge of completing a friction investigation with different objects and materials that you could find in your home. This week, we want to recap this investigation and find out what you have learnt. So as this is your second task, you will have already completed the quiz, so well done. The reason that I've created this PowerPoint is so that you have a better understanding of how you can represent your results using a graph. So therefore, as you can see on our first slide, the aims of this lesson are for you to understand how to represent your results or your data, how to create a graph to show your results from the friction investigation that you carried out, and then to plot this data onto a graph. So that's your results. So moving on to the next slide. So the first thing that we're going to look at is, I'm just going to get a pen, is this question, which is how can I represent my results? We know that we want to use a graph and the reason that we want to do this is so that we have a visual representation of our results. And then if we move on to the second question here, which is what type of graph I what type of graph would I use? This is a more tricky question because we have we have different types of graphs that we're going to look at. And the two graphs that we're going to look at are a bar chart and a line graph, and we're going to decide which one we should use to represent our results. Moving on, we now have some information on line graphs on this slide. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to read through this so that you have a better understanding of a line graph. And then moving on to the next slide, we're going to look at bar charts. So there's a lot of information here about bar charts as well. And I want you to have a read through it so that you have a better understanding of what a bar chart is. And there's one more slide for a bar chart. just to give you some more information so that you can make a better decision on which graph you're going to use. So then we're going to move on and we're going to look at this question. So which graph do you think we are going to use? So after reading the information on the line graph and the bar chart, you should now be thinking about which graph you're going to use according to the data or the results that you've collected. So remember that a line graph, this one, is used to show changes of measurement over time and that's called continuous data. So you can see here the continuous data over time. The bar chart, which is this one, is used to show discrete data. So this information has no in-between value. So you can see here that they're all separate. There's no in-between value, okay? And it's usually collected in a table. So in order to help us decide which graph we're going to use, I have the results that Mrs. Proudlock has collected when she carried out the investigation that may make our discussion a bit easier. So. If we have a look, these are the results that were collected by Mrs. Proudlock in her friction video that you can find on YouTube. So if you have a look, she has collected results and she has used different surfaces. So she's used a puppy mat, a door mat, a wooden tabletop and a cushion cover. And then she has recorded the distance traveled by far. Now, one thing that I notice about her information is that there's no in-between values recorded and to me it looks like discrete data. So if this information is discrete data, if we have a look back, back to the results, we now know that we need to create a bar chart. So well done if you knew that that's what we were going to do. So moving on, I'm now going to model 
how you would create a bar chart and I'm going to use Mrs Proudlock's results to help me do that. So I now have Mrs Proudlock's results. I'm just going to pop them up in the corner so that I can look at them when I'm creating my bar chart. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think back to when we were in school and we were drawing a bar chart together and I want you to think about the first thing that you need to do. So have a think. What's the first thing that you're going to need to do to draw a bar chart? So now that we've thought about it, I hope we have said that we need to draw the lines for our actual graph and what they're called is an X axis and a Y axis. So I'm going to attempt to draw them here on my piece of paper. There we go. And one more. And now we've got the axes. So we've got, because we need to label them, the y axes. And now we've got the x axes. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to label my x and my y axes because it's really important that we do that. So we have to decide where we're going to put the information. So Normally, the, da the data would be represented on the y-axis. So here, on this, on the x-axis, we're going to have the type of surface. And on the y-axis, we'd have the distance traveled by car. I'm just going to take this to the third line, because there would be some room. that is measured in centimeters. So make sure you put your unit of measurement on there as well. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to label my y-axis and I'm going to label that with a scale. And we need to make sure that they're equal intervals so that the interval between each box is the same amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to try and fit this onto the graph. So I'm going to label my intervals in intervals of 10. So each square will represent 10. So if you watch, I've got 10, next one would be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and I'll just go up to 100. So when I'm plotting the distance traveled by car in centimetres, I'll be looking at the intervals and I'll be estimating where I would plot that information. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move on to the y-axis and I'm going to mark out where I want my bars to be on the bar chart. And I'm going to label the types of surface so we've got the puppy mat the door mat the wooden tabletop and the cushion cover so i'm going to go ahead and label those now so i'm going to start by marking out where i would like the bars to be so as you can see that will be the thickness of the bar and in here i'm going to write puppy mat Then I'm going to skip a square so that I have room in between the bars. I'm going to mark out again where I want those to be. The next one is a doormat. Again, I'm going to skip a square and mark them in. Skip a square, mark them in. And then label those. So I've got the wooden tabletop. And the last one is the cushion. Over. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to look at the distance travelled by a car and I need to plot the data on the graph. Another thing that we will need is a title. So I am just going to write that here. 
so that I don't forget about it because we need a title for the graph. Okay, so if I look at the puppy mat, I know that the distance travelled is 39.5 centimetres. So looking along the graph, I need to see where that would be in between. So that's obviously going to be between 30 and 40. And you would have to decide whether it's going to be closer to 30 or closer to 40. And we know that because halfway between those, if I mark that with a different colour so that you can see. So halfway between 30 and 40, about there, that would represent 35. So we know that we're beyond that. So I'm going to get as close to 40 as I can. And that would be my first bar. Now I'm just going to colour them now so that we can see them clearly on the graph. But you can do that at the end. Then I'm moving on to the doormat and the doormat is 18 centimetres. So that's going to be between 10 and 20. Halfway is about there. That's 15 so I'm going to move up a little bit about there. And draw that down and we're estimating as close as we can and I'm just going to get a different colour. Then we're going to move on to the wooden tabletop. Now that's 76. So that's going to be between 70 and 80 and it's just going to be above halfway. So I'm just going to mark halfway. I'm just going to go slightly above that now as best I can. Go. That then. And then I've got the last one which is the cushion cover and that's 25.5 so that's just literally above halfway. And it's just a rough estimate because I don't have smaller squares they would allow you to be more precise when plotting the information. But there we go, we've got the four bars, they're coloured in so they're nice and clear and it's a visual representation. I've forgotten one thing, can you remember what it is? Yes, so the last thing, I hope you've got it, is the title. And remember I put it on the side here to remind me to put that in. Now, this is where I'm going to give you a little challenge because I have modelled this so that you can look at it and create your own graph and I'm just going to write the start of the title so it's going to be a bar chart showing and you're going to tell me what your bar chart is showing so what is the information telling us that's what I want to know so that's basically it. We've gone through the bar chart, we've looked at the results and we've talked through how we're going to do that and what graph we have chosen and why. There's a really good visual representation of your results and it'll allow you to analyse the data more clearly. You can see straight away that the distance, the, the object and the surface that allowed the object to go furthest was if you look at it already is the highest so that's a wooden tabletop so you can pick out information very clearly if you want to challenge yourself you could write some questions around your bar chart and see if anyone at home could answer them now because this is a powerpoint but it's a video feel free to scroll back and forward so you can have a look and pause it at certain points to work through your bar chart step by step with me um and I look forward to seeing them. If you have any questions at all, just email myself, Miss O'Neill, Miss Usher or Mrs Proudlock and we'll get back to you.